The wise old man archetype is one of the most important and well-known archetypes in Carl Jung's psychology. According to Jung, this archetype represents the accumulated wisdom and experience of humanity, and it embodies the qualities of insight, judgment, and compassion. Explore the second sermon to the dead, I recommend that you view the first episode on the wise old man archetype on this channel before viewing this. That night, Philemon stood beside me, and the dead drew near and lined the walls and cried out. We want to know about God. Where is God? Is God dead? Philemon rose and spoke. And this is the second sermon to the dead. God is not dead. He is as alive as ever. God is creation, for he is something definite, and therefore differentiated from the pleroma. God is a quality of the pleroma, and everything I have said about creation also applies to him. But he is distinct from creation, in that he is much more, indefinite and indeterminable, he is less differentiated than creation, since the ground of his essence, is effective fullness. Only insofar as he is definite and differentiated, is he creation, and as such, he is the manifestation of the effective fullness of the pleroma. Everything that we do not differentiate, falls into the pleroma, and is cancelled out by its opposite. If, therefore, we do not differentiate God, effective fullness is cancelled out for us. Moreover, God is the pleroma itself, just as each smallest point in the created, and uncreated is the pleroma itself. Effective emptiness is the essence of the devil, God and devil are the first manifestations of nothingness, which we call the pleroma. It makes no difference whether the pleroma exists or not, since it cancels itself out completely. Not so creation, insofar as God and the devil are created beings, they do not cancel each other out, but stand one against the other, as effective opposites. We need no proof of their existence. It is enough that we have to keep speaking about them, even if both were not, creation would forever distinguish them once more out of the pleroma on account of their distinct essences. Everything that differentiation takes out of the pleroma is a pair of opposites, therefore the devil always belongs to God. This inseparability, is most intimate and as you know from experience, as indissoluble in your life as the pleroma itself since, both stand very close to the pleroma, in which all opposites are cancelled out and united. Fullness and emptiness, generation and destruction, are what distinguish God and the devil. Effectiveness is common to both. Effectiveness joins them. Effectiveness, therefore, stands above both, and is a God above God, since it unites fullness and emptiness through its effectuality. This is a God, you knew nothing about, because mankind forgot him, we call him by his name, Abraxas. He is even more indefinite than God and the devil. To distinguish him from God, we call God Helios or Son. Abraxas is effect. Nothing stands opposed to him but the ineffective, hence his effective nature unfolds itself freely. The ineffective neither exists nor resists. Abraxas stands above the Son and above the devil, he is improbable, probability, that which takes unreal effect. If the pleroma had an essence, Abraxas would be its manifestation. He is the effect itself, not any particular effect, but effect in general. He takes unreal effect, because he has no definite effect. He is also creation, since he is distinct from the pleroma. The sun has a definite effect, and so does the devil. Therefore, they appear to us more effective than the indefinite Abraxas. He is force, duration, change. The dead now raised a great tumult, for they were Christians. My father, can men unite in such a god? Does the knowledge of such a god not amount to destroying human bonds and every society based on the good and the beautiful? These dead rejected the god of love, of the good and the beautiful, they had to reject him, and so they rejected unity, and community in love, in the good and the beautiful, 
and thus they killed one another, and dissolved the community of men, should I teach them the God who united them in love, and whom they rejected? Therefore, I teach them the God who dissolves unity, who blasts everything human, who powerfully creates and mightily destroys. Those whom love does not unite. Fear compels. When Jung started his inner journey, he wanted to get to the source in the human mind where religion is formed. A place in the mind that will be filled one way or another, and the very root of a person's morals and motivations. Is it not often the most atheistic and nihilistic people, that seems to be the most fanatic about something? At the start, the dead ones ask, is God dead? This statement, was first heard from the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, who used it as a way to express his ideas about the decline of religion and the rise of secularism in modern Western society. We also learn about a God above gods, that mankind forgot. Abraxas, that is effect itself. Jung asks Philemon, can men unite in such a God? Does the knowledge of such a God, not amount to destroying human bonds, and every society based on the good and the beautiful? Philemon's last answer on this is. Those who love does not unite, fear compels. Implies that, when love is not strong enough to bring people together, fear becomes the dominant force that governs their actions. In other words, love is not enough to create a bond between individuals or groups, fear is also needed to make people act in certain ways favorable to humanity out of a sense of self-preservation or protection. In the next episode, we will look deeper into this new god, called Abraxas, giving us a greater understanding of what reality really is. Thank you for viewing.